could have put. But me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So I told you that this was going to be a very busy time as Washington now starts to build its staff. Dan Quinn going out and hiring those who will work under him and try to figure out how to get the best group of individuals here as coaches to fill out this staff and get this team to where we ultimately want to be, which is a contender in this league. Not going to be easy, especially when you're trying to pick others off of staffs that already exist. If these are good coaches, which is what we want, it should be tough to fill out this staff because you're going to either have to promote these coaches or you're going to have to be granted permission from some of these teams. Now, the biggest reason that we're here today is because Washington is adding former Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Johnson to the staff. Now, it was rumored that Brian Johnson was interviewing for the offensive coordinator position. It was never substantiated. Whether he interviewed here or not, I'm not sure of. I never wanted him anywhere near here as an offensive coordinator. Now, in a different capacity, we can have a discussion, which is what we're here to do today. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at some of the news that's floating around. So we head to our social media maneuvers. And what we find is Jeremy Fowler, who has been very busy concerning the commanders. He seems to have an end on this type of stuff. He's getting this information a lot quicker than the others. Uh, we've mentioned Jeremy Fowler's name now here at least three or four times throughout this process. He also had the Cliff Kingsbury uh, information. Um, he was the one that told us about the Raiders assistant that Dan Quinn uh, inquired about trying to bring him over to Washington. Now, here's Jeremy Fowler yet again talking about the commanders in which he writes, the commanders are expected to hire former Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Johnson to a prominent offensive staff role per sources. Johnson, who guided Philadelphia's offense last year, interviewed for several several head coaching jobs this cycle, which um, most Eagles fans were surprised about. As a fan of this division and a, and a team in the same division with the Eagles, I was quite surprised when his name came up as a head coaching candidate as well. Some seem to think very highly of Brian Johnson. We'll speak as to why here in a second, um, but also wanted to bring this up. Didn't want to leave this out. This is something that has been circulating for the last couple of days, and um, it wasn't enough newsworthy enough for me to mention it in an individual video, but now that we're here, might as well tackle it too. Um, this is from Pro Football Rumors, but we have seen this all over uh, X. I thought this was the perfect tweet to illustrate what I wanted to talk about because it talked about both of the guys that uh, have been blocked. So we talked about when Dan Quinn came along, he was bringing Joe Witt Jr. with him from that Dallas defensive staff. Were there going to be others? We talked about that. One of the guys that we talked about in particular was Al Harris. Now, we also mentioned, um, you know, I did at least, uh, Durde, the defensive lines coach. I, we haven't heard anything about him. Don't think he's going anywhere. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, but Al Harris was one of the guys in particular that I was interested in potentially bringing here. We had heard the, the clip. It's like a nine second clip of Al Harris on some podcast talking about how he pretty much go anywhere with Dan Quinn. Well, you, you don't have to go anywhere. You can just come to Washington with him. But Dallas has a say so in that, because as I mentioned, you would have to give him some sort of promotion. I don't think any other move coming to Washington would give you that promotion other than assistant head coach. Are you that smitten with Al Harris that you'll make him the assistant head coach? I don't know how big of a title that is, right? Um, at the end of the day, I don't think it's that big of a, a deal to bring Al Harris on that you want to give because I, I know this much. Ron Rivera made it a big deal about what assistant head coach or associate head coach meant, right? Um, and he didn't just give that title out to anybody. He could have given that to Jack. He didn't give that to Jack. He saved it and he gave that to Eric Benemy when he got here and he made a big deal about it. So I don't know if that's a big thing or not, whether that's a preference or, or whatever, if it's preference based at the end of the day, the Cowboys aren't playing nice. Okay. As I, I would expect them to be a little ornery. We did take their defensive coordinator. We have taken a guy that was in the running to be their next defensive coordinator in Joe Witt Jr. So they're not going to play nice with us. We are in the division. They do hate us and we hate them and they shouldn't be nice to us. 
But um, Washington did put in a couple of requests for uh, a few assistants. One, uh, Lunda Wells, who is the current Cowboys tight ends coach. We've seen the growth that we the Cowboys have shown, whether you're talking about Dalton Schultz, who went on to be a prominent role and um, big figure and piece in that Texans offense this year in C.J. Stroud's rookie season. He was outstanding in Dallas. Uh, we've seen Peyton Hendershot and some of the other guys continue to develop um, under the tutelage. Uh, no, nobody maybe even more so than Ferguson, right? The the tight end out of Wisconsin. They're, they're really doing a good job with these tight ends in Dallas. And I, what I'm starting to figure out, and we know this, uh, is that the tight ends coach and the offensive line coach are one and the same. Yeah. You know, if you can coach the offensive line, you can coach tight ends. If you can coach tight ends, you can coach offensive line. That's what it seems to be uh, because we had a guy, Juan Castillo, who was the tight ends coach, but he was also the offensive line coach. So I think those two go hand in hand. They were trying to bring Lunda Wells over from Dallas as the tight ends coach to Washington to be the offensive line coach. And Dallas said, ah! <laughs> no, you won't. And obviously they blocked Al Harris from coming over as well. So uh, Dallas not playing nice. Didn't expect them to, uh, but it's just funny to see uh, the Cowboys trying to stop us from growing and improving over here. I get it. I get it. Anyway, I digress. So let's talk more about Brian Johnson, which is the reason we are here. So Brian Johnson is going to be added to this commander staff in some capacity. We are yet to know exactly what that's going to be. One can only assume he's had an extensive background working with quarterbacks, and that is all I'm really interested in. I think he's going to have some sort of quarterback slash offensive passing game coordinator uh, role here, which would be fantastic. Again, I'm just I'm blown away by how all these organizations have some sort of pass game or run game coordinator. And we've never heard of anything like that here in Washington. I'm like, where's our pass game coordinator? Where's our run game coordinator on offense? Where's our defensive pass game coordinator? Where's our defensive run game coordinator? These, these are all over the league and we don't have a single one of these guys. We had never heard of this position until this past coaching cycle when we had to start digging into other team staffs to see that this guy was the pass game coordinator. This guy was the run game coordinator. This guy was the defensive pass game coordinator. I'm like, so you mean to tell me we've been in the dark this long? But this is what happens when you have these old curmudgeon head coaches like Ronald Rivera. You get stuck in the 90s. So you don't have the new upgraded software, right? We still working with AOL over here. We still got dial up internet. <laughs> That's the kind of shit we've been running with over here. Mr. Uh, the analytics say he wouldn't know analytics if it slapped him in the face. So I'm trying to catch up with the rest of the league. And I think a guy like Brian Johnson makes a ton of sense from this perspective. Now, again, this feels like another episode of second chance, right? Give me a, a second chance, right? Uh, or give me one more chance. This feels like an, a, another episode of the retreads if you will. Like, everybody's getting a second chance. Um, it, we, if we're going to show grace to Dan Quinn as he get his, gets his second chance, you have to show grace to Cliff Kingsbury as he gets a second chance and a second crack at the NFL. As Brian Johnson gets a second crack in a prominent role in the NFL. You have to give these guys another opportunity to prove that they're worthy. Now, I will say in the case of Brian Johnson, I am not as upset as some of you may be because he's not calling plays. This is the role he failed in. He was excellent in Philadelphia in 2022 when he was the quarterback's coach for Jalen Hurts. He was excellent. When Jalen Hurts almost won league MVP and took the Eagles to the Super Bowl, nobody was complaining about Brian Johnson then. As a matter of fact, that's why the Eagles promoted him to offensive coordinator because he did such a good job. You put him in that same role here with whomever we draft. I'd like to think, and clearly, the rest of the league thinks highly of Brian Johnson. Say what you want. I can say what I want. But clearly, other teams around the league 
feel some type of way about Brian Johnson, think that this guy's bright and smart and has some kind of qualities that are redeeming about him as an offensive mind in this league, as a young up and coming coach, because he got head coaching opportunities despite, despite the Eagles cataclysmic collapse this season. He got another opportunity to at least interview. You would think his role would have been diminished OC at best, but probably more so in the role like he'll be brought in here in some capacity as a quarterback's coach, pass game coordinator, uh, both combined something along those lines. You would think it would have been more of that than it would have been offensive coordinator or even a head coaching interview, but he got those this offseason. So he's been a quarterback's coach similar to Joe Witt Jr., who I was excited about getting an opportunity here. This guy is a teacher, is Brian Johnson. He's going to do well with whomever is brought in here as the quarterback because that's what he's done best. If you look at his rap sheet, you look at his body of work, he brings you his resume. You're going to see quarterback, coach, quarterback, coach, quarterback, all the way down that puppy up until last year where you get to him being the offensive coordinator. So that tells me he's got a history of teaching guys how to play the position. That's what we need, teachers. That's what we've lacked here in Washington. Developing young talent. So before you go railroading this hire, he's not calling the plays. That's when you could have been upset. That's when I would have been upset. He's not calling plays here, guys. We're hoping he can do what he helped do for Jalen Hurts in 2022 when he almost won the Super Bowl and won league MVP almost. That's what we're hoping he can do here for whomever we bring here as the young quarterback that we're going to bring into the fold more likely than not this offseason. So I don't hate this move. This is another one of those, let's just wait and see, right? If we're going to continue to watch these episodes of Give Me One More Chance, or we're going to continue to watch these episodes of the retreads. Let's just see how this episode may be a little bit different from the other ones. Or maybe it's exactly the same. Only one way to find out. Tune in next week. Same time. Same channel. Right? We, we, we don't know anything. Let's just... I, I said this already. If we're going to believe, if we're going to give this thing a chance, then you got to support the moves, even if you don't agree with them. You, there's always time for I told you so. Trust me. If it fails, there's always time for you to say, hey, remember when I said, hey, I time stamped it for you in the comments. There's always time for that. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's plenty of time for that. You don't have to do that right now. We'll see. Voice your opinion, right? Whether you agree with this, you're indifferent, you don't like it, you hate it, you detest it, whatever. State your opinion, state where you are, and then move on, right? And then give it a chance. That's how these things should go. It's not always how it's going to go, but that's how these things should go. State your position, right? Let it be known how you feel. That's the environment that we've cultivated here. I want to know how you feel. And then we, then we give it a chance. What does that hurt? That doesn't hurt anybody. Then we give it a chance. If it doesn't work, then we can go back to that original opinion that you had, whether right or wrong, and we can discuss. Or we can talk about when we knew it wasn't going to work or when we saw it starting to turn the corner for the better or for the worse. Because we're going to live and die with every single you know, snap. Whether that snap is taken in OTAs, whether that snap is taken in August, in, the, in training camp, or in the preseason, or, of course, during the regular season. That's what we do. That's why we're fans, short for fanatics. Anyway, Brian Johnson being brought here in some capacity. We don't know what capacity. It's not offensive coordinator. We do know that. He won't be calling the plays. And I don't know, because I still contend, and a lot of you have already told me that Cliff Kingsbury doesn't want to be a head coach in this league. He's already said and Ian Rappaport reports that uh, Cliff Kingsbury doesn't want to coach in the league. He, he just wants to call plays. He wants to have fun. That sounds great, right? That's what you tell yourself when you can't get a head coaching job. I don't want a head coaching job. That's what you do, right? 
I don't want a head coaching job. This is what I want to do. Then when they come calling, knocking on the door because you're doing a great job, is he still going to have that same energy? I'm good. I'm having fun. I doubt that. Cliff's a young guy. Trust me. He wants to be in control of his own ship. That'll change. If he does what he's been brought in to do and he's successful, he will be gone. Maybe Brian Johnson will be the perfect transition. And maybe, again, we're watching another episode of Give Me One More Chance, right? If that's the case, maybe he gets a second opportunity to be the Oak Sea in a similar situation where somebody has success, gets a head coaching job. In the, in the case of Brian Johnson, the first time it was Shane Steichen, he gets the job and OC is open and he's promoted and he fails miserably. He learns from that first experience. Now he gets another chance here in Washington, maybe two years down the road, and maybe he's ready to be successful. Who's to say? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Let's just be thankful that right now, we're not going to ask him to call any plays. We're just going to ask him to help this young quarterback, whomever he is, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, develop. We'll leave it at that. And anyway, I hope to see you guys later on tonight. We got a big one. All right, Commanders Kings will be on the channel tonight and it's going to be epic because just like we just had this discussion, we got so much to, to discuss. Man, is this one going to be fun. I cannot wait. Bart Scott can't wait. Y'all know what it is. Until next time, you guys have a good one. Take care. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. 830 tonight. Thursday, February 8th. If you're watching this video on February 16th or you're watching this video on February 14th, it ain't next Thursday. It's this Thursday, February 8th. Tonight, 8.30p, Commander's Kings. Don't miss it. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Louis.